Okay guys, so the first sleeping bag I'm going to be talking about is a Van Gogh Nightstar 250. This is the first sleeping bag that I bought really for the outdoors. It's my first sort of proper entry level into the outdoors sleeping bag. So this sleeping bag I bought because it had a good comfort rating, which basically means you can go down pretty, pretty cold temperatures and still remain warm. Um, a few downsides to it are the pack size. It, pack, it doesn't pack that small. Um, when I'm going to be talking, I'm using some terms like pack size, comfort rating, loft, down, and synthetics. These are all terms that I'll explain. So, in terms of pack size, uh, it means the size of which the sleeping bag packs down. So when you shove it in its bag and squeeze all the air out, it's the size that you have left. Um, you want a smaller pack size for longer distance camping, things like that, where, you, where space is at a premium. So basically, this sleeping bag doesn't have a very good pack size. Other things I'm going to be talking about are loft, which essentially is how thick the sleeping bag is once the air is inside of it and padded out. Not so much with a synthetic sleeping bag, which brings me on to the word synthetic. Synthetic basically is the filling inside of this bag. In terms of sleeping bag, you have both uh, natural fibres and synthetic bags. A natural fibre bag will have feathers, uh, either from duck or geese, more efficient at keeping you warm than synthetic sleeping bags, which are made of man-made plastics, uh, polyester, poly polycarbonates, or whatever they are. So basically, yeah, these, this bag is filled with plastic, um, and we'll be comparing that with a bag filled with uh, uh, natural filling. So basically, this is a sort of three seasons, two to three season sleeping bag. Um, the season rating on a sleeping bag can vary from different brands. However, uh, the season ratings tend to sort of roughly give you a good guide to when you should be using them. Like, I would not use this week's sleeping bag in the middle of winter. It's going to be freezing cold. And I, although I have done, I have used this in the winter, it's not the most comfortable bag. So yeah, this is the Vango Nightstar 250. Very good bag if you're just getting into the outdoors, you're going to be doing some sort of summer camping, uh, not too, not, not really too hot in here, but it can also take you into sort of the autumn and springtime. So basically, a good thing to look for on a sleeping bag is you're going to need one with a hood. As you can see, this sleeping bag has a hood here, uh, quite a padded hood. Hoods usually have a drawstring. So you can close them up, if I just zip the bag up here, you can see it brings it down and narrows the hole. This is very good if you're going to be camping somewhere where it could be quite cold overnight, it also stops you getting damp inside your sleeping bag. So I recommend if you're looking for a good all round general uh, purpose sleeping bag, to go for one with a hood on. Uh, something else you need to also look at, on the inside of most sleeping bags, most modern sleeping bags anyway, you'll have a baffle. And that is this section here, you may not be able to see that very well, but essentially that is a small drawstring here, and you can draw that up, and that basically seals off the sleeping bag, the lower section of the sleeping bag, from your neck. So it, can, it basically splits the sleeping bag into two sections, your lower half and your upper half, including your head and neck, um, which creates a small pocket up the top for your head, so the air, uh, the, the heat sort of coming from your head stays in this little pocket, keeps your head warm, and the heat coming from the rest of your body keeps the rest of your body warm. Okay, so that's basically what that is. Uh, sleeping bags with zips, most of them have a full length zip, the whole length of the sleeping bag. Um, this is on pretty much every modern sleeping bag you'll find this feature. Uh, it's quite rare to find some sleeping bags without them, but you'll see why I mention that in a few minutes. The outside of the sleeping bag doesn't matter too much. Some sleeping bags will say they're waterproof and things like that, but really you do not want to be getting your sleeping bag wet. If you're going to be wild camping outside, I recommend using a breathable waterproof bivy bag, which essentially is a sack that you put over your sleeping bag, very much like the sleeping bag itself, but it will keep you dry. And another good feature is box foot. Essentially, the bottom of the sleeping bags are designed differently. Some of them have a single seam that runs all the way around the edge here. However, slightly better sleeping bags will have something known as box foot, which essentially has a separate panel sewn onto the bottom here. As you can see, this black section, and there's the black bottom and the blue top. And that has an extra piece of uh, insulation in there, which uh, maximizes the warmth from your feet. And then you have these two hanging loops here. Most modern sleeping bags will also have a bottom zip. This allows you to vent the sleeping bag. If it's getting too hot in there, you can open the bottom and you can vent, which is quite a nice feature. Also, I find it quite handy if you're getting up for the toilet at night and you don't want to take your sleeping bag off. You just unzip this and poke your legs out. So that's basically uh, all that is. So that is the Van Gogh Nightstar 250. 
A uh, very good sleeping bag, uh, has downsides, the pack size lets it down a little, but other than that it's a good starter sleeping bag. So now we're going to move on and look at the next sleeping bag. Okay guys, so the next sleeping bag we're going to be looking at is the Blacks of Greenock or Granick Palomine um, Regular, which essentially is an old sleeping bag from the 1960s. This is a duck and downfield sleeping bag. If you don't know what that means, basically it means it has a mixture of both duck feathers and goose feathers which is slightly cheaper than pure goose feathers, but goose feathers are more efficient at keeping you warm, whereas duck and down is, they're not as warm as just goose, but it's a cheaper alternative because obviously it fills it up a bit better. Uh, they do have different uh, percentages, so a higher percentage of goose is better. I'm not quite sure what this is, but it's an old bag because it's quite an old bag. But anyway, this bag is from the 1960s, so it's very old, um, but it's still a very good bag, and I recommend that if you're looking for a slightly better bag, but don't have too big of a budget, maybe even look for a second-hand bag, because that's what I've started to do. Uh, you can get some very good deals on, on uh, goose down bags, um, but as I said, this is a mixture of both. So, this also has a zip, much like the Nightstar. However, because it's an older bag, the zips tend to be uh, only sort of halfway, half length, so you can open up the bag there. It has a metal zip, which is nice compared to the plastic of the Van Gogh. So this, these sleeping bags were built for sort of just general camping and hiking um, in the UK's climate. Uh, this does not have a hood. It does have this small little thing here, which is the sack that it rolls into, which is a very nice idea. An integrated bag. Um, you can also use this as a pillow holder, put your pillow in there. It does have the neck baffle, so you can tighten that up, up around your neck, so it keeps you warm still. But obviously without the hood you're going to be getting a little bit colder than you are in the Van Gogh Nightstar. Uh, this bag doesn't have very many special features, uh, it's just got a simple foot design, uh, it's very simple uh, quilting design as well, which the quilting is the way the down in feather is stitched into the bag, um, so as you can see it's just simple cross sections. This is one of the cheaper models from Blacks in the 1960s, uh, it was a sort of mid-range model, uh, a budget but quality sleeping bag. So this is a very good bag if you can pick one of these up, a Palomine sleeping bag. They also did a Palomine Special which is slightly bigger. Um, but yeah, it's a very nice sleeping bag. It's very warm. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I've heard I've read lots of reviews about them. Very good, very good quality as well. Thinking this bag is over like sort of 40 years old and it's still in very good condition. Um, one downside I'm gonna mention with down and feather bags is you have to have them dry cleaned. Many people say you can wash them at home, but personally I always think it's best to take them to someone who knows what they're doing, so I would always take my bags to the dry cleaners, which is where I'm going to be going with this one very soon. So yeah, it's a very nice bag, good for general camping, still only a two to three season sleeping bag, so in comparison with the Nightstar, this is a very similar bag, but obviously of an older era. If anything, I think this would probably be slightly warmer than the Nightstar because it's a down in feather filling, which is very, very efficient at keeping nice and warm. So overall this is a very nice sleeping bag, it's a little bit heavier than Nightstar which is a downside to it. The pack size is very good, it folds down pretty small. And it's a very good bag if you're looking for a first but quality bag. So now we're going to move on to the last bag we're going to be looking at today. Uh, this bag is quite different to the last two. It's another 1960s 60s bag and it was one of the most expensive bags you could buy from Blacks in the 1960s. Okay, so this is the Blacks Polar sleeping bag. This was made in the 1960s, the same as the Palomine. However, this was one of the top of the range sleeping bags you could buy back in the day. So as you can see, this sleeping bag has a hood on it. It's a very padded hood, very thick and warm, which is very nice. Uh, that on the, the, the hood on the Nightstar isn't as significant as this. Um, as you can see, it's got the drawstring here where you can draw it in. It's the same style as that on the Palomine, the older style with the little rubber, to rubber toggle and blue string. Which is very nice, very retro, it looks kind of cool. Uh, inside the hood, you can open it all the way up. And what's nice about this is the sleeping bag hood, it, it sort of opens the full width of the sleeping bag. So i just bring that down here. You can see it opens right the way up like this. And the reason for this is the fact this sleeping bag does not have a zip like the other two. So the only way in and out is through the top. So it's kind of awkward, you have to wriggle your way down, but I will tell you why that is in a few minutes. In comparison with the other two bags, this bag is very, very good at keeping you warm. It's pure goose down, so it's the top the top of my all the sleeping bags that I own. Um, it's my sort of pride possession in terms of sleeping bags. You can see the Black's Polar logo, logo in there. 
This has been to Nepal. I can't remember if it's been to Everest, but it's been very close to Everest. Um, it was owned by a medical officer. So it's a second-hand sleeping bag from the 60s, like I said. Uh, it's a, a lot better than the other two sleeping bags. It, inside you have a sort of shiny lining, and this is so you can the e for ease of getting in and out. Because obviously the only way in and out is to go through the top, which could be an issue, but sliding in is not too bad. It's in terms of its loft, which is the thickness. If I just turn it this way, as you can see, once the air is pumped into it, it's a very thick sleeping bag. In comparison with the other two, my now is going to be crushing this a little bit, but as you can see, uh, in terms of the thickness, the Palamine is still pretty thick when it's got its full loft. However, the Polar beats it hands down because it's pure goose and the, there's a lot more of it in there. So basically this is a high altitude and extreme cold sleeping bag. It, back in the day this thing was for going to Everest, going to the like Antarctic, um, visiting extremely high altitudes. And that's basically what this bag was for. So it's a very, very performance based sleeping bag. Very technical for its day. Very, very good at keeping you warm. Um, another lovely thing about this sleeping bag is despite its massive size and its warmth, this is a four season sleeping bag by the way ladies and gentlemen, so this is the best, the best of the best. <laughs> so it also packs smaller than the synthetic sleeping bag, the Van Gogh Nightstar, which may sound a bit odd because this is the warmest and the most comfortable of the bags, but it packs smaller than the Nightstar, but that's because down not only keeps you warm and is very efficient at doing so, it also packs extremely small. So this bag has a smaller pack size than both of the other two sleeping bags, despite the fact it is the biggest. Um, so as I mentioned with the other two foot designs, this one has a different foot design altogether. Back in the 60s, uh, they didn't really have sort of box foot. Well, they, they did, but only on certain bags. So this has adopted a different technique, where essentially they have flipped the fabric to create this sort of taper up here. So it's almost like a triangle foot. So it is kind of like box foot. It leaves you with a very strange foot shape in terms of the sleeping bag. But what's nice about this is your feet naturally are sort of longer on the end, obviously. So this fits your feet very nicely and keeps them nice and snug. Yeah, this is a very nice sleeping bag. Very, very warm and comfortable. Uh, I spent a couple of nights in this, and this is the sleeping bag I'm going to be taking with me on my expedition next weekend. Um, the Duke of Edinburgh training expedition. So yeah, that, this is the thing I'm going to be taking. I'm probably going to do a full review of it while I'm out in the field. I'll do a night, I'll sleep in it, and I'll tell you how I feel in the morning, I guess. But as you can see, you can zip it right up like that. And once you're sealed inside this thing, because of the fact there's no zips, you're going to be extremely warm. It's quite cosy in there, and it's, it's nice. It's a nice sleeping bag. They're not very popular nowadays. Uh, these are very hard to get hold of. I have not seen another polar sleeping bag for sale, um, because... The issue is with down sleeping bags, over the years they lose their loft, so as the feathers come out, every, every down sleeping bag will leak feathers. Um, the red one does it quite a lot, <laughs> this one not so much, but it still leaks a few, but the, the higher quality sleeping bag, the better it is at keeping them in, and because this was the best of the best in its day, um, it's retained almost all of its loft, so originally it would have had a loft of 6 inches, and it still has a loft of 6 inches, despite the fact it's 40 odd years old. This bag has been very well looked after, um, which is very nice. So if you can pick up a bag similar to this, uh, maybe not by Blacks, but by any other company, I recommend doing so because a bag like this could be cheaper. And this it, this bag was cheaper than the Van Gogh Nightstar. I paid £60 for the Nightstar when it came out, and I paid 40 for this sleeping bag, um, which is a lot better value, really, when you think about it. You're getting an Arctic sleeping bag or a polar sleeping bag for high altitude camping. Um, yes, it's second-hand. Yes, it's a lot older, but it's the same weight, it packs the same size, if not smaller, and it's almost twice, if not three times as efficient as the synthetic sleeping bag. So I would definitely recommend looking for second-hand down sleeping bags. Uh, if you're a little bit worried about the, the fact that other people have slept in them, just take it to the dry cleaner, they'll professionally clean it for you, and you'll get a bag that's like as good as new. Um, I do recommend looking at the label on the, sleep, on the individual sleeping bag. This does not have a label, which is a downside on very old sleeping bags like these. Uh, you don't tend to have labels, um, but you can just take them and have them dry cleaned. But yeah, so if I'm, pro I'm probably going to be looking for more of these sleeping bags because I love this one to bits and I can't wait to get out there and use it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you find it very useful. 
Uh, please comment, rate, maybe even subscribe. Leave comments below on how you thought I did. Uh, and please leave comments about uh, what you want in the next video. So thanks again.